Hello friends, this is another lecture of Vector Calculus lecture number 9, uh, Mathematical Physics and this is especially for MSc and BSc students. Here we're going to learn divergence of physics and its physical meaning and uh, here we're going to solve some problems as well, right? And links of the previous lectures are given in the description box. So if you want to watch them, you may go through. So now let us uh, start, okay? So let me explain what is divergence of vector. So divergence of a vector field. The divergence of a vector field or vector point function is given by. Uh, this is suppose a vector field or vector point function. And f, it is given by f1 i cap f2 z cap f3 k cap. Then it is given by divergence of f or you can write del dot f. So here it is, uh, you know, vector differential operator or del operator, you can say. Uh, this symbol is also known as nebula. And uh, this operator is given by this. This is the del operator. We have already got this one, right? Uh, in the last lecture, I think. Okay. So this is your del operator. Now you see. Uh, this divergence of a vector is uh, the dot product of del and that uh, vector right so you can write that way this is the del operator dot this is the f right so if you find a dot product then you're gonna get this okay partial derivative of f1 with respect to x partial derivative of f2 with respect to y partial derivative of f3 with respect to z right so it is you can see it is a scalar quantity this is a scalar quantity right so now let me take a question uh, suppose the velocity of a fluid at a point at any point b suppose this v okay then so that the laws of fluid per unit volume per unit time uh, in a small parallel pipette okay uh, having center at p which is x y z its coordinate is x y z and the edges of the parallel p b uh, so here let me do a correction oh sorry that was correct uh, its edges uh, edges of the parallel of uh, to the coordinates uh, axis okay uh, is given by uh, divergence of v that is del dot v okay so we have to show that uh, here you can see we have to show that if the velocity this is the velocity at any point of a fluid then the fluid loss of fluid per unit volume per unit time is given by this del v or divergence v and this is the physical meaning of the of a divergence of a you know vector okay so solution of this equation gonna give you the physical meaning right so here you see uh, let me draw a parallelopipede here you can see this is parallelopipede let me draw it. this is the p point at the center of the parallel field and uh, here you can see this is x y z and velocity at this point is suppose v right now this is the physical meaning of divergence of p so solution let p be the point where velocity is this uh, velocity is given by suppose where vx i cap plus vy z cap vz k cap right uh, which also center of uh, the parallel of it right this point p so at this point this is the velocity and it is also the center of the parallel of it right we have imagined that way now you see it is dx dy dz these are the edges of this parallel field, suppose and the, uh, respectively parallel to x-axis y-axis and z-axis right 
so uh, this is suppose a b c d and the uh, bottom surface is suppose e f g h we have taken so here you see we have taken the edges uh, this edge along x axis which is parallel to x axis suppose dx and which is along y axis that is dy and this one this vertical one is along uh, parallel to z axis that is dz we have taken these three edges right so what we can do now here you can see dy this is dz right this is dx now let me draw it uh, more clearly okay this is the figure this is point p here the three components of vectors along x y and z axis as a uh, the three components of uh, velocity are this this is vx vy this is vz along that axis it is vz so what uh, fluid is coming from this direction we have considered from this direction fluid is coming and going out through this surface uh, going out in this direction and the top surface is suppose a b c d and the bottom is suppose e f z h we have taken that one dx this is dy and this uh, vertical one uh, is dz right these are the edges so velocity at the face a b f e you can see a b f e so that means this one a b f e this this surface that uh, the back one back surface a b f e okay this surface so here you can see this velocity through this surface uh, at this surface is given by vx del v by del x dx by 2 let me tell you how you see so this is the surface a b and this is the front surface that we have taken uh, that is d uh, c z x so this surface is the front surface this one okay so then you see the point p is between these two surfaces because point p is at the center of the parallelogram so it is in between these two surfaces at the at the midway between these two surfaces so we know this is the this edge is dx so as this point p is uh, is in between these two and it is the midpoint you can say then distance from this point to these two surfaces if to each surface will be given by dx by 2 right will be given by dx by 2 let me show you clearly uh, so here you can see this is the surface uh, a b uh, f e through which fluid is coming in and this is the surface through which fluid is going out this is the surface uh, suppose d c f sorry not f z h okay so the point is between these two surfaces and it is uh, in at uh, halfway between uh, between these two surfaces uh, here you see and the distance from this point p is uh, uh, to each surface is given by dx by 2 now here you see what does del v by del x represents so this is change in velocity per unit length okay so this length is this total edge is uh, dx we have considered so if per unit length change in velocity is this then so total change in velocity along dx will be given by dx uh, into sorry del v by del x into dx as we are going to find the velocity at this surface only okay so here you can see velocity at point p is v velocity at the point p velocity at the point p is what it is v x uh, along x axis its component is v x now if you if you, uh, you if you see 
if you go to go to that surface in this direction we have considered this is a, a this direction is positive this direction is negative if you go towards negative direction along negative x-axis you can say that way imagine that way so then or uh, that means you can say that velocity is increasing in this direction and if you go in opposite direction that will be decreasing and at the rate of this uh, del v x by del x at this rate so what will be the total change in velocity uh, because you see this point p we are taking the velocity at p vx along x axis and uh, at this p this is vx so if you go back to the surface this surface a b f e then velocity will be decreased by del v by del x into dx by 2 because the length um, or the distance from this point p from uh, this point p uh, from the point p to that surface to the surface uh, uh, which one is a b f e that's why it gonna be given by the total change in velocity from p to that surface a b f e will be given by partial derivative of v x with respect to x into d x by 2 right and that should be subtracted from the velocity along x axis at point p so hope you have understood this point so now let me clean these things so that is why velocity at this surface we have got this similarly you can find the velocity at this surface also a d z h okay at this surface also you can find so velocity at the face uh, that d e z h sorry d c z h here what will be the velocity now uh, when you come towards the uh, towards this surface a sorry not a d c g h from the point p which is at the center of the parallelopipede then the velocity is increasing and from this point p the distance to this surface is dx by 2 that's why total change in velocity will be partial derivative of x with respect to x into dx by 2 right and here you see at the point p the velocity along x axis is vx so that's why that will be increased by at this surface that will be increased by this mass right so hope you have understood that's why our velocity at this phase will be vx plus partial derivative of vx with respect to x dx by 2 that's what we will get right so this is the velocity at the phase uh, d c g h at this phase right so hope you have understood this so now you see uh, let me go to the next slide okay so here you see velocity at the phase a b let me rewrite the velocities again uh, in the new, new slide so these are the two velocities we have got so this is by 2 so let me draw the diagram here again this is the diagram right so this is a figure that we have drawn so let me redraw it okay so now volume of fluid into the area perpendicular to the velocity of the fluid gives the volume of fluid flows per unit time per unit time so let me tell you how suppose this is a surface and here you see this is a surface so velocity direction of velocity in this direction this is the direction of the velocity Okay, which is perpendicular to this surface 
and this is suppose dy its uh, length is dy and breadth is dz then its area will be dy into dz now here you see if you multiply v velocity with the area of this surface then you will get v dz or dy dz right you will get this so v means what v means uh, so here in this direction we have taken uh, vx along x axis right so vx will be dx by dt right that's uh, gonna give you the velocity along uh, along x axis right so then dy dz now you see dx dy dz gonna give you the volume right that's gonna give you the volume length breadth height right so that's why divided by t this is the volume right this is volume now you see here velocity at this surface is velocity at this surface is this one not only vx we have got vx minus partial derivative of vx with respect to x into dx by 2 so if you multiply with the area of this phase a b f e then what you gonna have you're gonna have that uh, volume of liquid coming into the parallel of it per unit time right so what we're gonna have now volume of so fluid so instead of water let me write fluid so it is not necessary that it should be water volume of fluid flows through flows in through the phase a b f e will be given by velocity at this surface that is v x minus partial derivative of v x with respect to x dx by 2 into its surface area what is the surface area so you can see so its length is dy breadth is dz so this area of this surface will be given by dy by uh, sorry dy into dz right dy into dz so this is the volume of water flows in uh, per unit time okay per unit time volume of fluid flows in through the phase this one uh, per unit time this is per unit time i forgot to write that so that should be volume of fluid coming in through the phase this one per unit time so similarly we can find the volume that is going out through this surface uh, d c z h okay so we can find the volume of fluid flows through this surface per unit time so similarly volume of fluid flows out through the phase d e z h per unit time per unit time now you see volume of fluid flows out through this surface flows out d e g s flows out through this surface this phase that will be given by velocity velocity at this surface is this one velocity into its area area of the surface okay so that will be equal to that will be equal to v x plus partial derivative of v x with respect to x d x by 2 this was the velocity at this surface right into its area area is again d y into d z if you see this length is d y right and its height this one is d z right so hope you have understood this so now let's move on to next slide so now you see therefore loss of fluid per unit time will be given by here you see this is the amount of fluid coming in and this is going out right so here you see this is the volume of fluid coming in per unit time and this is the volume of fluid going out per unit time right so if you take the difference uh, you see uh, this uh, you can see clearly this from this expression the volume of fluid going out is larger right 
that means loss of fluid is larger in amount than the uh, liquid coming in uh, through the uh, uh, into the pelvic fluid right so that will be given by volume of fluid per unit time goes out minus volume of fluid per unit time comes in right that's going to be uh, along x axis uh, so here you see we are taking the velocity along x axis right so loss of fluid per unit time along x axis is given by so this is the volume of fluid goes out uh, flows out or you can say loss of fluid per unit time minus uh, fluid coming into the parallel of per unit time so now let me rewrite the uh, expression again on this new slide so this is the um, loss of fluid per unit time along x axis so similarly we can find the loss of fluid along y axis and z axis okay loss of fluid per unit time so first uh, simplify this expression if you simplify this what are you going to have so these two taken common right so this to cancel vx minus vx gone so adding these two we have got this so here two two will be cancelled right so this is the final expression so this is the uh, volume of uh, liquid uh, loss of fluid uh, per unit time along x axis similarly you can find uh, loss of fluid per unit time along y and z axis as well respectively y and z axis those are given by these two expressions right so when you had uh, the had to find the loss of fluid per unit time along x axis you had taken here vx so now along y axis you have to take here vy and here it is vz that's the difference so hope you have understood now let's move on to next slide so here you see so total loss of fluid per unit time if you add the loss of fluid uh, along all the three axes uh, all the three axes you will get this expression and taking x y z common you will get this one right we have taken dx dy dz common right so here you see this expression within the bracket that's uh, uh, so that is uh, this expression is nothing but divergence of v but uh, forget about this now so now you see loss of fluid per unit time is given by this expression per unit time the total loss of fluid per unit time is given by this expression now we are to find loss of fluid per unit volume per unit time per unit volume per unit time now you then, see here you see this expression uh, this this result this result is nothing but loss of fluid per unit time now we are going to find the loss of fluid per unit volume per unit time so this is per unit time so in order to find the loss of volume uh, of fluid per unit uh, we need in order to find the loss of fluid per unit time per unit volume we have to divide this expression this result by the volume of the parallel fluid so let's do that if you do so then what you will get total loss of fluid per unit time divided by volume of the parallel fluid and that is equal to so total uh, loss of fluid per unit time is given by this expression right so if you divide it by dx dy dz then you will get uh, uh, this is the volume of parallel fluid dy dx dz so this two will be cancelled so finally we have got this so this is nothing but divergence of p right or you can write del dot v this is the divergence of v so this is the meaning of divergence physical meaning of divergence so here you see uh, this is true exactly true when dx tends to 0 dy tends to 0 dz tends to 0 right and uh, write few more important things that 
uh, del dot v will be zero then uh, is zero then there is no loss of fluid right and it is called equation of continuity for incompressible fluid and if divergence of v is zero then v is called solenoidal vector this is solenoidal vector function right so now let's uh, solve some problems if this r is given by this and uh, this is the r vector and r means if you write simply r that's gonna represent the mod of r vector that means magnitude of r then we need to show this two so we are to prove this two okay so now let's solve these two questions so first this is the given vector r and its magnitude is given by root over x square plus y square plus z square so now if you find the divergence of this then what you will get uh, first let me find that uh, r vector divided by cube of its magnitude that's gonna give you this this is the vector r and divided by magnitude of r is r is a uh, root over x square plus y square plus z square and its cube is this one and it can be written this way the denominator can be written this way 3 by 2 right uh, x square plus y square plus z square the uh, whole to the power 3 by 2 right so here you see if you find the divergence of this then you have to define it partially uh, the x component then uh, partial derivative of its y component with respect to y then partial derivative of its z component with respect to z so what we have done here we have taken the x component x by this one then uh, we have taken the y by this one this is the y component then z by this one right this is the z component and we have got uh, in this x component we have differentiated partially with respect to x differentiate the uh, y component with respect to y partially then partial derivative of z component with respect to z that's how we find the uh, divergence right so that's how we need to find the divergence so now let's find the the derivative of uh, partial derivative of this x component first so what you will get this is the derivative of x component so here we're going to apply this u by v derivative of u by v is v derivative of u minus u derivative of v by v square so you're going to use this so take this one as u and this one as v so that this is the denominator and derivative of numerator is here derivative of x that's going to be one right and x into derivative of the denominator is this so this is the denominator right then denominator is square that's three by two whole square so here is the denominator so x square plus y square plus z square 3 by 2 whole square so that is the denominator right so hope you know these things so now you see if you differentiate this then what you will get partial derivative of this x square plus y square plus z square whole to the power 3 by 2 so this 3 by 2 comes here then x square plus y square plus z square 3 by 2 minus 1 that's going to be half right then again it is function of function so if you differentiate the term within the bracket here as you are differentiating this with respect to x so y and z should be assumed to be constant and their derivative with respect to x will be zero as we are taking partial derivative right and derivative of x square is twice x so that is twice x so here 2 2 will be cancelled right so we can write this here so here you can see 2 2 cancel and x into x that's going to be x square so uh, we can write the x, uh, result this way 3x square x square plus y square plus z square whole to the power half right so that's how we can write so this is the this is the partial derivative of the x component so similarly you can find that partial derivative of this and this as well so let's move on to next slide so this is the let me write the expression first that is divergence of r by vector r by it's a cube of its magnitude right this is the expression right 
so here we have got that uh, partial derivative of the x component we have already got this so let me rewrite it again right so we have got this this is the similarly uh, we can find partial derivative of y component that is partial derivative of y by x square plus y square plus z square 3 by 2 so this is the y component right so here you see in this case if you move back to this uh, then what you can see here these two these two cancels and here you can see x square plus y square plus z square this is uh, nothing but r this is your r right this is your r so you can write this way x square plus y square plus z square this is not r actually this is r square so r r was root over uh, this one r is your your r is x square root over x square plus y square plus z square right this is r and so r square so let me write it correctly r square is x square plus y square plus z square right so r cube will be what will be r cube now you see this r that root over x square plus y square plus z square that can be written as what that can be written as x square plus y square plus z square whole to the power half if you take its cube then it will be and that r cube will be x square plus y square plus z square whole to the power 3 by 2 right so now use this here so this is going to be your r cube and this is going to be your r and here you see uh, this is uh, this is your r square right x square plus y square plus z square this is your r square and if you have cube here so that's going to be r to the power 6 that's what we will get so hope you have understood these things then what uh, we have got the answer here partial derivative of the x component we have got uh, we have got r cube minus 3x square into r by r to the power 6 that's what we have got similarly if you replace this x square sorry if you replace this x square by y square then you will get the partial derivative of uh, y component right partial derivative of y component will be x square is replaced by y right this one so then partial derivative of z z component will be this one so this is your partial derivative of z component as this so let us put this three in the above equation this equation to find divergence of r vector by cube of its magnitude that is uh, mod of r vector cube right cube of mod of r vector so so let's uh, uh, find the divergence of this so if you put all these three values if you put all these three values this three whatever you have got here then you will get this result right so then let me rewrite the result, same result here okay so this is the result we have obtained now take uh, r to the power 6 uh, lcm then you will get this result so here r cube plus r cube plus r cube you will get 3 r cube so what we have taken r cube plus r cube plus r cube so that's why we have got 3 r cube then here see you can see here you can take 3 r common 3 r common 3 r common then taking that we have got 3 r x square plus y square plus z square then divided by r to the plus 6 so here you see x square plus y square plus z square this is nothing but r square right this is nothing but r square so so let me put here r square so this is r to the plus 6 
so here r into r square sorry uh, here you see r into r square that's going to be r cube so we have got so as you see r is root over x square plus y square plus z square right so r square will be x square plus y square plus z square so that's what we have used here right so now we have got 3r cube minus 3r cube divided by root over 6 so here 3r into r square we have got 3r cube right so these two cancels so then we have got 0 divided by r to the power 6 that is 0 so that's why it's divergence of this uh, r vector divided by cube of uh, its magnitude right is equal to 0 that's how we can prove so hope you have understood this now let's move on to next question uh, there is another part of this question that is divergence of grade of r to the power n so that is equal to this one that we need to prove here so let us prove this so grade r to the power n we will consider that we know this that n r to the power n minus 2 uh, vector r so how we have got this uh, we have already uh, proved this one in the last lecture uh, that link is given in the description box uh, link of all the lectures uh, previous lectures given in the description box you may watch so in the lecture 8 we have already proved this grade r to the power n is n into r to the power n minus 1 into r vector that's already proved so we will consider that uh, known to us right so it is proved in the last video okay we know it uh, we have considered that this result is known to us now divergence of grade of r to the power n so n is taken out as it is a constant so divergence of r to the power n minus 2 r vector so r vector is uh, nothing but your x i cap y z cap and z k cap right so now to find the divergence we know we have to take the partial derivative of x component y component and z components respectively with uh, with respect to x y and z right so that's how we can find the divergence taking x component now let us take y component now let us take z component so this is z so to take the y component we have to take y into this one z into this one will give you the z component so hope you have understood these things so now you see let us find the partial derivative of uh, this first component x component so here we are going to take u into v rule uh, derivative of u into v u derivative of v plus v derivative of u so taking this r to the power n minus 2 as u and x as v we have got uh, r to the power n minus 2 derivative of x is 1 right minus sorry not minus plus x into derivative of r to the power n minus 2 if you find the derivative of r to the power n minus 2 r, r is x square plus y square plus z square whole to the power half right whole to the power half as you can see here we have n minus 2 so that's why it's going to be n minus 2 by half right so now if you differentiate it you will get n minus 2 by 2 x square plus y square plus z square and uh, n minus 2 by 2 minus 1 that's going to give you n minus 4 by 2 right and function of function if you differentiate this with respect to x so y and z should be taken as constant so derivative of x square is twice x 2 to cancel here so now you can see you can replace this one by r right you will get this so we have replaced this uh, this term uh, by r square then uh, this one is r square these two these two will be cancelled right so then you will get r to the power n minus 4 into x now you see as we have x here so if you multiply x here here um, here right uh, then what you will get x x x so this is going to be x square if you multiply this to x then you will get x square here so that means you can replace this result by this n minus 2 r to the power so, uh, not n minus 2 actually now replace this by this result we have got now and doing so what we're going to have we're going to have r to the power n minus 2 plus n minus 2 into r to the power n minus 4 x square that's what we will get 
similarly you can find the partial derivative of your you can find this one also y component and z component as well so here you see i have made a mistake here that should be uh, plus I have missed the n n del by del z because we have n here right so then what you will get similarly you will get del y by del z of r to the by n minus 2 y if you find the partial derivative of this just replace this x square by y square that will be your result right so r to the by n minus 2 plus n minus 2 r to the power n minus 4 y square similarly let me clean this part if you find the partial derivative of z component this one so del del z of r to the power n minus 2 z and that will be equal to r to the power n minus 2 plus n minus 2 into r to the power n minus 4 z square just to replace this x square by z square that's it so now we are going to use these three values we are going to use these three values here you can see here you can use right so then we have n here n here n here also so we can take n common right so we can take n common and then one more thing Uh, we can take n common and you have you here you say r to the power n minus 2 here also we have r to the power n minus 2 here also we have r to the power n minus right so that's why what you gonna have so wait so divergence of grade of r to the power n that's gonna be equal to n derivative of let me rewrite it okay, let me rewrite the expression in new slides so this was the divergence right So we have got the derivatives of x, y, and z component this way. So here you can see. So these are the derivatives uh, of x, y, and z components. So we are going to use these three values. We are going to use these three values in order to obtain this divergence of grade of r to the power n. So here. This is the derivative of x component this is the derivative of y component and uh, here it is you see uh, plus del n into del by del z so this is the derivative of z component so if you use these three values here okay here then you will get divergence of grade of r to the power n then here you can see this n n n taken common then we have here r to the power n minus 2 n minus 2 r to the power n minus 2 that's gonna be 3 r to the power n minus 2 then here n minus 2 you can see this n minus 2 r to the power 4 you can take this part common from these three terms right from these three terms you can take commons right and doing so what we're gonna have n minus 2 r to the by n minus 4 you will get x square y square z square right so you're gonna get this so here you see this is nothing but your r square right if you replace this one by r square then what you will get you're gonna get this value right so let's move on to next uh, slide so let me rewrite the last expression in the previous slide this one you will get so replace this one uh, by r square so what we have done just to replace this by r square right so then r to the by n minus 4 into r square that's going to be r to the by n minus 2 right r to the by n minus 4 into r square is there so that's going to be r to the by n minus 2 so our final result is this so again here you see r to the by n minus 2 r to the by n minus 2 taken common so we have got 3 into r minus uh, uh, plus n minus 2 right 3 plus n minus 2 so here r to the power n minus 2 
so here 3 minus 2 you know that's very simple right so this is your final result that is what we can prove right so hope you have understood now next question is so that this vector is solenoidal it's very simple so let me write the given vector first so this is the given vector so to be solenoidal a vector to be solenoidal uh, its divergence must be equal to zero so let's find the divergence so here you see so you can see here. partial derivative of x that's going to be one and partial derivative of 3y if you find uh, the partial derivative with respect to x that's going to be zero because y should be considered as in that case uh, constant right so if you find the partial derivative of y with respect to y that's going to be again one if you find the partial derivative of 3z with respect to y that's going to be again zero and with respect to z if you find a partial derivative of x that's going to be zero and if you find the partial derivative of minus twice z with respect to z that's going to be minus two so this is the result we have got so from here we have got one and from here we have got one and from this we have got minus two and uh, this is equal to zero that's why this vector v is solenoidal so hope you have understood and uh, if you have uh, understood and if you like the video then hit the thumbs up button and share with your friends and do comments and uh, if you are new to my channel please subscribe to the channel thank you for watching and see you in the next video